fruits. I cannot go on eating fruits because all of my reasonment was going along with fruits and with everything that I'm eating. I was talking about Kafka. I'll tell you that Kafka is not a figo. It's not cool. I mean, he was a loser in society. We were talking about losers before. He was a loser, but you know, that's what everybody says, you know, Kafka was a loser. Okay, but he had a good job, he had a rich father and everything. Such a person was committed enough to literature as to write, which is not nothing, I mean, it's not literature that he wrote all his life, but he was committed to literature, not to the public. That's why he wanted all these writings to be burned. Because it was committed to literature, when you write literature, you have to be in touch with all the classics, with the people that have believed in literature before you, not just the people and what they want to read. This is newspapers. In the newspaper, you write what people want to hear. So you write gossip, you write about video porn, about, I don't know, the, the stuff that people click on. But literature is a different thing. Literature is people that have been writing for centuries, and when they write, they don't just think of themselves or about their contemporaneous, whatever. They think of a story that's clear in their heads. It's like prophets. Kafka writes these stories with no intention of appearing, with no intention of understanding himself. He writes the story because it's the only thing that he can do in that moment. It's like really artistic. There is no intention. I mean, everything, every time we talk about art and people wonder what is art, it depends on the intention of the artist. It also depends on the lack of intention of the artist. I mean, the artist who creates just because he cannot do anything else but create, renews the power of nature in culture, which is fuses and nature. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. nature and culture. Yeah. <clears throat> By doing that in such a in an, indif in an indifferent manner, by not caring about his own credit, his own story, but telling the story in an abstract way, is really giving something to literature. Yeah. Not like <laughs> autobiographical biographical things. Yeah, but you're also talking about the 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 impact of words, the way that they used to be carved in stone. And, and when there were no books, and there, were, there was very little stone, in the old time of Persia, people would erect stones in the fucking middle of the desert, carving stories, even the Romans did, but the Romans came much later, and they would write the actual stories of the war, of the campaigns of war and whatever, that was basically what it was, because the literature guy wasn't just a literature guy, but it was somebody who brought a stone with him and was strong enough as to carve it on the stone. The words they wrote, the intention that they used to actually be able to carve this, these things and to be able to make them last was beyond our task of writing, our need of writing. I mean, we write Everybody has a blog, only in Iran, talking of Persia, there are 700,000 blogs. Everybody writes something. And possibly half of these people consider themselves writer, writers. Many of them have read Kafka, many of them have read Borges. Whatever, it's okay. But literature, that's what I was saying before. It's past the time of literature because the power of a book in a word within recording machines for video, for audio, without entertainment in this way, even though people were dancing and everybody could dance at that time, <laughs> and not now. But still, a book in your hands in the 19th century, in the 20th century even, the, the first part, was something more powerful than it is today. Because today the books, I mean, are very easy to, uh, very easy to be accessed Quiet. by everybody. Yeah. And writing a book, publishing a book now, I mean, anybody can do it. Yeah. Spreading it, blah, blah, selling it, and all these problems, but they're not problems. I mean, you don't live off copyrights. 
very few people do and they didn't live on copyrights even before Marx, Marx the communist ideologer wanted he was studying law and he stopped studying law because he wanted to stop studying law because he wanted to become a poet which at the time was a fashionable job so you would go around in salons and dining rooms with people listening to you and your poems it was a normal job it was like going to become an actor poet I mean literature is at its utmost in other times not now after said this I mean what can you say of course if you want to write the best roman of the of the century you can try just because we're in the 21st century but as for the 20th century the games are, are over they're closed 20th century 19th century people that wrote 10,000 pages of the same history of the same story like Proust or like people that really committed to writing and they had nothing else but write in their lives. Mm -hmm. Rainer Maria Rilke wrote 10 poems in 16 years. 10 poems in 16 years. Who has the commitment to write 10 poems in 16 years? <laughs> Not to talk about Homer. <laughs> These prunes are amazing and addictive. Almonds. Um, very close. Figs. God bless literature. God bless literature, and especially the people who know how to do it. Hey, but you can't let that stop you from writing. You can't let Listen, you can't let the powers do. that be overwhelm you to the point that you're not able to create your own. <laughs> right. You better see her because you know she's. <clears throat> Pocahontas. Come on. Come on, of course. Everybody can write. Everybody should write. So that they can learn to read better. <laughs> <laughs> and to understand that what they write is not exactly what they like to read. Mm -hmm. I mean, who enjoys write, uh, reading a secret diary of somebody talking, you know, like you would talk or you would write in your own diary? Hey, come on. I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm weird, you know. No, I mean. Hey, literature could be taking a different turn in this, in this point in in time, Fra. Also, because we have different ways of communicating. Our communication has expanded. We have a lot more words in our dictionary than there ever was in the beginning of the century. So of course you would, we would be having new material to explore, new combinations of words that would make something else this it would not be the same as the masters of the years before but it's definitely of course no, it's definitely that, something that would be of our of our time of our period i mean for sure i, I don't want to feel i don't want to feel helpless i don't want to feel helpless in the like I don't want to think that everything has been done and everything has been made. That all that I'm doing here now is to participate in this motion called life and wait until I'm dead. It's not like history isn't happening now. It's already happening. It's happening. It's been happening since we were born. And what's wrong with existing right now? As if there's no there's no beauty in it. As if Oh, come on. oh my God! This. Global warming. There was no oh, cinema. I mean, when you believe, when you understand, the, the times when I was most inspired to write were after seeing movies, for example. Can you compare this moment One of inspiration minute. from from cinema, for example, which is typical for anybody, with the inspiration that people got out of reading books themselves, like Don Quixote. Don Quixote reads. 1,000 books and then he starts thinking that he's a hero himself because he reads only um, nice books. books yeah. yeah, nice books and everything. I mean, I'm not saying that the history is over and that, of course, we, if we have to talk about the 21st century, in five centuries they will uh, try to look up for some writers of the 21st century. I'm just saying that writing for an archaeologist of the 30th century it's not like he's gonna look for the writer of the age. He's gonna look for anything is written now. 
So, I mean, it's not just the writer who writes. At those times, in the 14th century, when somebody was writing, in the 12th century, monasteries, when 